everyone, it's Victoria and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the legendary Josh Brown from Teague Chokes today for our first mini masterclass which is all about chokes, you guessed it. So I know a lot of women who will be watching this will be really keen to know more about this subject area and I love that Josh is here today. So Josh, before we get going, can you just tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, what you shoot, etc, please? Hi Victoria, yeah, no, thank you for asking me to do this, um, it's my pleasure. So I'm based, um, obviously at Teague Chokes, we're based here down in the southwest in Wiltshire, um, near Malmesbury. Uh, shooting wise, shoot competitive clays, meaning sporting and fit ask. Um, I've won English and British titles as a junior in a couple of different disciplines, um, obviously now I'm a senior, it's a little bit more competitive, I suppose the Best one for me, um, I was fourth individually at the first European fit task I shot at the junior, so that's quite quite an achievement. For me. Wow. Mine, but, um, but yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay then, so let's get stuck in. So in its simplest form, please could you tell us what choke is? So choke is basically, um, in any gauge gun, it's a constriction from the bore size of the gun at the end of the muzzle. Um, and it's basically going to tighten the pattern or open the pattern up. Um, Brilliant. Basically. And there are some lovely pictures of chokes right behind you. So if no one's ever seen a choke before, there we go. Okay, great stuff. So um, fixed choke guns, what's what's the standard? And could you tell us why why that is? Yeah, so I mean, it depends on what type of gun it is. Um, most, for example, most trap guns tend to be fixed at three quarters and four, which is 30 thousandths of an inch and 40 thousandths of an inch. Um, that's the most common setup for trap guns simply because um, with trap you tend to be shooting your first target, going away targets, your first target's much closer than the second target, and your second target you want you know tighter choking for the second shot, so to speak. That's why there's full choke there. Um, particularly in game guns as well, same reason um, with shooting game, most game guns are fixed at three quarter and full. But then when you're going back to um, older side by side guns and sporting guns as well, they tend to come fixed choke at quarter and a half, you're shooting stuff less further away, um, giving yourself a little bit more of a chance with a bit more of an open pattern. Sounds good, yeah, really good. So could you tell us, I know there are quite a few, but could you tell us what the different size chokes are and what they're used for? Yeah, so um, chokes start off in, in all gauges um, from cylinder through to extra full. Uh, mm -hmm. so there's 10 different constrictions. In 12 gauge, they go in 5 thousandths of an inch increments, starting at cylinder being nothing, and extra full being 45 thousandths of an inch. Um, in 20 gauge, they go slightly different. They work in 3.5 thousandths of an inch increments, um, same sizes, but in 3.5 thousand steps rather than 5 thousand steps. And the most common ones, I suppose, a lot of sporting shooters and a lot of people tend to shoot quarter and a half just because it's what most guns come with, um, mm -hmm. and people tend not to change chokes a lot of the time. and they leave them at that and then obviously when you're shooting, speak to guys who are shooting game, um, most people will be shooting three quarter and full, um, that sort of taller pheasants and things like that and yeah and obviously if you speak to somebody who's shooting skeet obviously they're going to shoot skeet chokes and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. There is no, I suppose there is no right or wrong as to what choke you should shoot or shouldn't shoot, everyone has a personal preference so um, you've almost got to find out what works for yourself rather than sort of just going on what someone else is saying really. Yeah, brilliant. So you just um, you just mentioned like cylinder chokes, so for someone that doesn't know what that is, could you tell us? Yeah, so cylinder is basically no choke at all, it's, mm -hmm. it's no constriction on the barrel, so from the from the bore size it's no constriction, it's just a parallel tube at the end of the muzzle. Brilliant, sounds great. So if someone is a recreational clay and game shooter like me, Josh, what uh, chokes would you recommend uh, them to put in their gun? So I would use and always sort of recommend really um, for your average clay shooting, a little bit of game shooting, um, nothing too high. I would always recommend something around 3 8 choke, which is 15 thou. Um, in both barrels, you'd be surprised at what it won't hit or won't kill um, mm -hmm. at good distances. And then if you're looking at going onto some taller stuff or further away clays or advancing in, in what you're doing, then maybe tighten up to something like 5 8 choke. Um, but yeah, something around the 3H, 3H choke, or even quarter quarter if you're just sort of starting out and getting to grips with things, um, that's what I'd recommend. So for someone watching this, Josh, that doesn't know what size choke they've got in their gun, whether that's a fixed choke or a multi-choke gun, um, how would they find out? 
Yeah, so on um, all fixed choke guns, stamped underneath the barrels, on the, underneath the fore end somewhere, um, there will be either stars or little circles or dots. And they relate back to a chart which is five stars or five dots, five circles, whatever, um, will relate to cylinder choke, so no choke. Um, four stars being quarter choke, three stars being half choke, two stars being three quarter choke, and then one star being full choke. Um, with multi-choke guns, the choke should say on the side of the choke what it is, either with notches on the end of the choke, with sort of most Beretta and Browning factory chokes. So we'll have notches on the end of the choke. Again, relate that back to that chart. Yeah. Five, five notches being cylinder, four notches being quarter, etc. Um, or it should say on the side of the choke. If you do have a, a fixed choke gun and you can't seem to find um, any notches on the barrels or anything like that, you do have those, those brass sort of tapered gauges, um, mm -hmm. which some people use. They are fine, but you've got to remember they only go from one bore size. So if your gun, for example, is a backboard gun, and which is probably going to be 18.7 in 12 gauge in, a bore, in the bore size, um, but your tapered gauge would probably go from 18.4, um, which is a nominal bore size, so actually it won't really tell you what choke is in there because it'll be completely different. It won't relate to um, the size that's on in the barrel. Easiest way to do it, if you don't know, you're not sure, um, here at Teague we can, we can measure and find out for you, no problem, um, or local gun shop or gunsmith should be able to measure them for you. And Brilliant, that's great. Excellent. So, so a lot of people perceive other people to kind of get hung up on choke. Like, you know, they might go to a shooting ground and see someone changing their chokes, or, you know, someone might be talking about it. Or So I guess I just wanted to ask you, as our wonderful expert, do people need to get hung up about the choke they have in their gun? Um, not really, no. I mean, a lot of, you're basically finding out, like I said before, you're finding out what works for you. Awesome. So every gun, every cartridge, every choke is going to pattern differently. So you've got to find what works best for you, what you're happiest with, um, whether it's you're happy shooting, you know, there are people shooting full and full and you're happy with that, um, or you want to shoot half and half or three quarters and a quarter or any combination works. You've just got to find what works for you, really. Um, I would I would always recommend shooting more open chokes at things that are closer, particularly in sporting shooting. When you're shooting clays are much closer, and you want to give yourself a little bit of advantage, mm -hmm. and then tightening up slightly when you're shooting yourself a little bit further away or a little bit more edgy, um, as a general rule. But yeah, just you've got to have a play for yourself and find out what works for you. So if someone's got a fixed choke gun, Josh, and they want to shoot something entirely different than um, what the gun's choke for, what can you guys do about it? So depending if it's fixed choke in terms of it's fixed quite tight at three quarters and four, for example, um, there's a couple of options really. So we can at Teague what we call choke adjust again. So um, keeping it a fixed choke gun, but actually we're going to take some of that choke out. So we machine the choke out, hone and polish the barrels. Um, so for example, we could take it from three quarter and full down to half and half or you know whichever combination you want to shoot really. Um, the other option being is depending on, we can do, yeah, so we can do that to most guns. And then the other option, depending on um, the wall thickness of gun, we can actually machine threads into the barrels and convert fixed choke guns to multi choke guns. Mm -hmm. um, and we fit them with a, a thin wall choke system. So it, um, Creates the you know creates the gun as a mixed as a fixed choke gun, and you gives you you're more versatile with it. What you can shoot, so you can fit more open chokes and be shooting closer targets, and you know you can tighten up the shoot. Brilliant, yeah, it's a bit of a revolution, isn't it? <laughs> Excellent. So caring for your chokes, what what do you kind of recommend? And you know like cleaning them, and what's your advice? Yeah, what's your advice around choke care? Yeah. Um, so. With sort of all aftermarket chokes, I would always recommend taking them out every couple of times you're going to shoot the gun. Make sure that they will get seized in, so make sure you don't want to leave them in too long. Um, grease is always very good. A little bit of choke grease put on there just to make sure they come out easier um, if you do happen to leave them in a little bit longer. Be, you've got to be careful with them. I see guys and girls walking around putting chokes in their pockets, rattling around in their pockets and stuff with cartridges. Um, the physics of it choke is sat on a step inside your barrel if that isn't sat properly on that step if it comes slightly loose or there's a dink in the bottom of the choke and it's not sat completely on there it will eventually blow out um, mm. and obviously you don't want that so you do have a little bit of care around chokes and just make sure you know you're looking after them if you've dropped them just check there's no dinks or dents at the bottom of the choke before you screw it back in um, and if you're unsure of that just get a local gunsmith or a gun shop to, to check it out for you and, and they'll be able to help good one once over brilliant 
this has been excellent. Thank you ever so much. Um, I think, yeah, you've given some really great answers and hopefully everyone watching this will get a really good idea, kind of, you know, fill in any knowledge gaps around chokes and stuff. So if people want to um, get in touch with you or find out more about Teague, where's best to find um, Teague? So Teague, we're on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I think the Instagram is Teague Precision Chokes, so you can find us on there. Um, or the website www.teaguechokes.com um, Brilliant. And, and how about you? If people want to follow you, right, journey. Back to me again, I'm on all three social media platforms. But uh, yeah, Instagram is Josh Brown six three nine six. So yeah, head over there, give me a follow, um, have a look. And like I say, if if you're unsure about anything or want to know any more information on chokes, or you want me to explain anything a little bit better, what we said in this video, just drop me a message. I'm more than happy to to apply and help you out. You're such a superstar. Thank you so much for joining me, Josh. It's been really, really great, and I shall see you soon. Pleasure, Victoria. Thank you very much.